Hello, hello, good morning, and welcome back to another video. An extra video, uh, one that we wouldn't normally release at this time of the week. For those who don't know, we do a weekly video, normally on a Saturday morning, but you can watch them whenever you like. In the previous video, we talked about our heat pump installation, which we are still very, very happy with indeed, and we got lots of questions. And normally we read through all of them in the comments, reply to the ones that make sense to reply to. We can't reply to all of them, of course, because we get quite a lot. But we thought instead of answering similar questions over and over again in the comments, we would make a video to answer the questions. Because if quite a few people are asking, then probably even more people are wondering and just not commenting. So we're gonna do some heat pump Q&A, which means we need to go inside and find Kylie, who I think is uh, having a bit of a tidy up. Hello. I'm just... I could hear the sweeping from the other side of the farm. Now yeah, it looks better. Well, <laughs> here at least. Uh, does it? Shh, <laughs> don't look down there. <laughs> right. Okay, here we go. Here we go, move that out of the way. Okay. Would you like to take centre stage next to the, uh, the heat pump? <laughs> well, the water tank, we should say. And yes, we have not taken this plastic cover off because... It's currently protecting this unit while we were building the rest of the ceiling frame. It will come off when we don't need to protect it anymore. In how many years? Biggest asked question or comment was about the temperature of the tank. So first thing, lovely people, is do not jump to conclusions when we say things, which is we talked about 45 degrees. That was for the test. That was for the commissioning. That is not necessarily the temperature that we will have the tank at. That being said, we can run it at whatever temperature we want without any risk of Legionella disease because this system is clever and it runs a weekly Legionella cycle. Just like the outside one runs a weekly defrost cycle if you're in a cold climate. So it does the defrost so it doesn't collect ice and stuff. So, this tank has no risk of Legionella because it has that cycle which runs when it needs to run. But, we will run this tank at a yet to be determined temperature, which will be a temperature which is optimal for our underfloor heating temperature and the temperature at which we like to have showers. So, the guys who were here said it could be 45, it could be 48, it could be a little bit higher we will work that out when we start having showers and using the hot water system because we want to optimize the temperature to which we heat the tank so that we're not adding too much cold water and basically diluting it so that it's not using more energy than is needed to keep this at the temperature that we need if that makes sense it's likely to be around 50 but again from a legionella's perspective this tank will look after that for us and we don't have to worry about it. That's also useful when you go away, for example, when you turn it off for a couple of weeks and you come back, it will do all of that for you. Brilliant. That's that question answered. And one of the other questions that I was going to leave till the end, but Kylie just used the S word a few times in the answer to the previous question. She mentioned showering. Now, we don't have a shower at the moment, not in the house at least, and we're probably not going to have one for at least another year. But we have a solar shower outside, which works great in the summer. We also have a gas powered shower outside, which works in the winter. But it's not the most comfortable thing to use in the winter, even though the water is nice and warm. But a lot of people commented on our, we don't shower every day thing that we said. And so let's address that. Just because we don't shower doesn't mean we don't clean ourselves. There is a very big difference there. You don't have to have a shower to get clean. When we are dirty, i.e. covered in building dust and stuff, we have a shower. When we are not covered in building dust and stuff, we just have a wash. So fill a sink, or in our case, a bucket. So we just have a, a wash with a small amount of water and a face cloth or washcloth. And the reason for that is twofold. <laughs> Actually, probably threefold. Number one, it saves on water. You don't need to have a full-on shower every day if you're not doing anything where you're getting physically dirty. If you're just sitting at a desk or hanging out in a house, a kitchen, etc. Uh, it's just as effective to have a small wash. The other thing is it saves on energy. So you're not 
heating water or as much water as you would need for a shower. You're also not using as many products. So yes, to all those people who said, ew, you don't have showers every day. We clean ourselves every day. We just don't use a shower to do that. Good, I'm Simple. glad we got that cleaned up. All right, quickly, moving on. So the next most common question that we got is what are we doing about cooling and can this system do cooling as well as heating? And the short answer is yes, it can. It's not an air conditioning system, it is a heating system, but in combination with our underfloor heating system, we can do underfloor cooling. And so the heat pump system can pump cool water around the underfloor heating circuits. So that cold water running through the pipes cools down the floor, which cools down the air above, which is pretty cool. No pun intended. And then I know that the following question to that will be, oh, but doesn't that cause condensation on the surface of the floor? And yes, that's possible. But this system is also smart enough to read the relative humidity in the air and stop too much more cooling if there is too much humidity in the air. But to combat the humidity in the air, we have a ventilation system and that will extract all the warm, moist air kind of that rises up and the floor will then be cooling the air from the bottom. So it's a complete system. You have to think of it holistically. It's not just that this provides the radiant cooling in the floor, but we also have to provision a ventilation system so that it all works together. So this is a what's called an air to water heat source system, heat pump system. You can get air to air. So that would be the same thing, extracting the energy or the hot out of the air outside, but then converting it to warm or cool air that is inducted around your house. I don't like air conditioning. I f it feels funny to my breathing. Um, it dries your skin out as well. And it dries your skin out and it's just kind of, I don't know, there's something about it. Same as air heating I don't really like, which is why we've chosen to go for the radiant floor system. Um, but you could have a heat pump that does air to air if you can put the ducting in like a ventilation system. Um, since we're already also putting ducting in for ventilation, it didn't make sense to put in another set of ducting for air conditioning. And then also there is obviously the option that a lot of people do, which is put these mini splits, um, which are like on a room to room basis. We've also chosen not to do that because that requires mounting units on the outside of the house, much like the heat pump. And that kind of detracts from we believe this this building we wanted to keep the outside looking as traditional as possible and in keeping with the area and so we didn't want to have units hanging left right and center all around the building so i think that answers that question and what we're talking about here is for the main house where we're going to be living and working and doing all of those things in the outbuildings which is a long future distant project we're probably going to have a slightly different system maybe we will have some mini splits because we may only need to temperature control one of the rooms. We might not have underfloor heating over there, but we haven't really done all the planning and design work for that yet, so we don't really know. But what's nice is that we do have multiple buildings that will be able to put in multiple solutions and see how they all work together or separately and which ones are best and, and all that kind of stuff in our context. One more thing. Mm -hmm. So this week it has been around about the 30 degrees Celsius pretty much consistently all week. Last week was a little bit warmer, up to 34. It is currently 21 degrees in this room and it has had a minimum of 20. So it's constantly sitting at 20, 21 degrees. Um, and this is without any cooling, without any ventilation. The humidity in here, however, is 71%, which is a little bit too high. Mm -hmm. um, upstairs is a bit warmer because a lot of the heat comes through the roof that is not insulated. But we won't need to cool very much because the stone walls, once you have cool air in here, keeps it cool and equally keeps it warm once you have warm air in it. We don't really need any additional, probably don't even need the radiant cooling in the floor very much, maybe just in the hottest one or two months, but it's the middle of July and it's comfortable here. So there we go, just a short one with a few answers to a few questions. Uh, maybe it raised more questions as well, in which case stick them down below and we'll probably answer those in the comments rather than making yet another follow-on video. But if you like this approach to answering some of the questions, then do let us know that and we will try and do more of those as well. But I think that is it for now and we will see you in the next proper full-length video very, very soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.